So over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about real life. And if you've missed any of the homilies or talks about real life, you can go to our website, holyredeemerburton.org, and you can see them there, part one, part two, and part three, and probably after this weekend, part four. And you'll notice part four is a lot shorter because Father Steve's not preaching. <laughs> but if you missed any of them, go ahead and watch them. They're really, really good. So in part one of our series, we heard that Jesus is the real vine, and we are the branches. And if we're going to do anything, we need to stay connected to him. And we heard that Jesus is the real food who comes down from heaven to feed us and to nourish us. And we can receive that food over and over and over again. Then in part two, we learned what it means to really love somebody the way Jesus loves us. And then last week, we heard that heaven, heaven is our real home and that we are already citizens there and that God sends us from there on a mission out into the world to tell people about real peace. So to continue our theme on real life, I want to talk more about that mission part. So in his latest exhortation, Pope Francis says, God is eternal newness. He's always doing something new. And God constantly urges us out of our complacency to do something new. Our problem is, for us, it's safer and easier to remain complacent to do things the way we've always done them. Because we know what the results will be, the same that they've always been. We'll never be surprised, we'll never be disappointed, because we know what to expect. But at the same time, I don't think we experience much joy or excitement there either. So God constantly urges us out of that complacency to get going. That's the words the Pope uses. To get going on our mission that God has given us. And I think it's in living that mission that we live our real life. So what is our mission? Well, it's not an our thing at all. It's a my thing and a your thing and a his thing and a her thing. Your mission is given to you by God, and only you. Your mission is unique to you, and it's not like anybody else's mission. And only you can accomplish your mission. And even though I can't tell you exactly what your mission is, Father Steve can't tell you exactly what your mission is, nobody can tell you exactly what your mission is, except for God, the Pope says there are some things about all of our missions that we can know. The first thing, we can know that our mission, all of our missions, require real prayer. Quiet time with God. So we can hear where we are being sent who we are being sent to, and what we do when we get there. So that's the first thing all of our missions require, quiet time with God. The second thing, all of our missions include interaction with other people. We are sent into the world, not taken out of it to be isolated and alone. The third thing all of our missions include is activity, being active, doing that thing of greatest love for whoever we are with, and not just standing by and doing nothing. 
So if you were in the Kroger parking lot and you saw a guy trying to get his kids in the car, his groceries in the car, the bags were ripped, stuff was rolling around on the ground, and you saw that, I can guarantee you part of your mission is to do the thing of greatest love right then and there. And what would that be? To help him right and not just pretend I didn't see it and keep walking. So activity and not just standing by and doing nothing. And another thing the Pope said about all of our missions is they all have a destination. They will all take us somewhere, maybe not right away, but sooner or later we will all end up at the destination. And the destination is the fringes and beyond. Kind of sounds like Buzz Lightyear. To the fringes and beyond. The fringes, those places we don't want to go and most of us don't even want to think about. The jails and the prisons, the homeless shelters, out on the street with the people who live there, hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, all those places people are that we really don't want to even think about. That's our destination. So, let's run through our mission checklist, and you can follow along with me. First, quiet time with God. Yep, I can do that. As a matter of fact, I like to do that. At home, in the morning, when it's quiet, I can come here to the Adoration Chapel and just sit in his presence. Yep, got that. Check, I can do it. Next one was interaction with other people. Yep, I can do that. People don't bother me all the time that much. So, yep, that's not a problem. I can be, I can interact with others. Got that one. Check. Third one, being active and not standing by and doing nothing. Well, honestly, sometimes I struggle with that one. There are times I just as soon look away, pretend I didn't see it so I don't have to deal with it. But you know what? I can step it up a notch. I can handle that. I can be more intentional when I, when I know that my mission includes doing something. Yeah, I can do that. I got that one. Check. Okay, fourth one. Going to the fringes. I don't know. That's where doubt sets in. We doubt our ability to go there. We doubt that we would ever even know what to do if we got there. And we doubt because we are afraid. And we're afraid because I've never been there before. I don't know what the people are like there or what the places are like there. It seems scary to me there. There's too much unknown. If I do something, I don't know what the outcome will be. So we're afraid. That fear causes doubt and that doubt can send us right back to complacency. Yep, this isn't for me. I'll just do what I've always done. I was fine. But then nothing changes. Our mission isn't fruitful. In fact, our mission is terminated. And it's terminated because we think we can't do this. And if that's what came to your mind when you heard that the destination was the fringes and beyond if you thought, nope, I can't do that. You know what? You are absolutely right. We can't do this. You can't do it. I can't do it. Father Steve can't do it. We can't do this. I was on a retreat with Father Carl Pung a couple weeks ago, and he said the reason that we can't do that is because it's not our work. This is the work of Jesus. This is his work. But he calls us personally, each of us, to help him carry out his work here on this earth. That's our mission, to carry out his work here on this earth. So we can't do it. And he said, when that doubt comes, that's a good thing. Because it is a sure sign that we are as far as we can go 
on our own. And when doubt comes, it's not the time to run away in fear. It's time to ask for what we really need at that moment in that place. And what we really need to overcome that doubt is real power. And that real power only comes from the Holy Spirit. So how do we get that Holy Spirit? How do we get that real power? All we have to do is ask. St. Augustine says we do what we can and ask for what we can't. All we have to do is ask. So about a month ago, I met with my men's small group, not small men's group, men's small group. Somebody got confused last mass. We meet in a restaurant for obvious reasons, right? We're guys, there's food there. And it has a closing time, 7 o'clock. We have to leave, so we can't sit there all night and kibitz on. So it forces us to be efficient. So we met about a month ago, and uh, sometime before Easter through Easter and up until that month, there was something going on in here with me. It was turmoil, confusion, um, stress, tension, whatever it was. And it was just in here. It wasn't with any person, anybody, anything. It was just in here. And I mentioned it to the guys when we met. And somebody said, wow, we should pray. It's like, good grief, why didn't I think of that? Okay, so let's pray. So one guy put his hand on my shoulder and the other grabbed my hands. The first words that were said were, come Holy Spirit. And at that instant, in that place, the Holy Spirit, the real power, just rushed on me and hit me hard. And it flushed out everything, all that yuck that was inside of me was gone instantly, and it was replaced by the real peace we talked about earlier. See, I think I was trying to do everything on my own. I think I got to that place where I needed to ask, but I didn't even think about it. Somebody else asked for me, and the Holy Spirit came and flushed everything out and filled me with peace, real power of the Holy Spirit. So all we have to do is ask. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask it to come upon us. Ask him to fill our hearts to open our hearts so the spirit that dwells there can be free. Free to move us, free to activate us, free to encourage us. It's just free. And when we ask for that real power and we receive that real power, just like those disciples did at the first Pentecost, then we can go out and complete our mission. Then we can go and be fearless to wherever it is our mission goes. We can go to the fringes. We can go beyond. We can go wherever it is our mission calls us to go. And when we get there, we're gonna realize something, something really beautiful, that Jesus is already there, waiting for us. There is nothing to be afraid of after all. He's there, waiting for us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to ask for the Holy Spirit. So if you're with your family, I invite you to hold hands, put your arms around each other. If you're sitting next to somebody, ask them, can I put my hand on your shoulder? Or would you please put your hand on my shoulder? Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. We're just going to ask Holy Spirit to come upon this place, to come upon these people, to push out whatever it is that's in you that keeps you from being free so that when you leave here today, you can go out there. You can be fearless and you can live your real life. Come, Holy Spirit.